Back Before the Dark DLC times that I talked about in a previous video, developers of really good games were able to craft what were once called expansion packs. These tended to use the same engine as the original but provided a new world or story or series of levels for the player to enjoy, often featuring updates post-release that made the game even better. These were usually released in big box expansions to popular titles that could often run independently as part of an updated version of the original game. Now clearly this puts narrative heavy games at a strong advantage but I'll try to throw in a few other genres too. Keep in mind at all times that for each of these mere 10 entries there's easily another 5 to 10 great ones that I'm not speaking about from this golden age of gaming. Feel free to mention them in the comments, I'll probably agree with you. Now let's go! Number 10. Awakening for Dragon Age Origin. Serving as an entertaining extension to the plot of the original game, depending on how that one ends you can continue as your warden or as a brand new character from Orlais. Come to Ferelden on a recruitment drive. You have a main base of operations and a party to recruit full of interesting characters. The biggest problem Awakening suffered from was that it wasn't as good as a certain previous expansion pack by Bioware for another game nor was it as good as the base game it was adding to. Despite this, the 20 hours you spend here are still classic RPG goodness, especially compared to modern efforts. Number 9. Forged Alliance for Supreme Commander The last great RTS Chris Taylor would work on. Forged Alliance offers a new playable faction, a new campaign, a revamped interface and improved pathfinding. Each of the original races receives new units and there are many balance changes. The result is the best giant robot RTS game ever made. In all honesty, any number of great RTS expansions could have sat nicely in this spot, but I chose Forged Alliance over the likes of Age of Empires specifically because of the Forged Alliance Forever community and the Loud project, which are two divergent fan-made efforts to update the game, one providing a server emulator for the community and the other providing performance and AI improvements for us single player junkies. Go check them out, they're neat. Number 8. Beyond the Sword for Civilization 4. It's civilization, but more. More scenarios, more civilizations, more leaders, more community mods, and a huge swath of gameplay changes. 14 years later, and many players still consider it the definitive release in not only the series, but the entire 4X genre. But why has this title been so enduring? Well, it was the last of its kind, before the change in units and map structure and style introduced in the next title. There was also so much of it to enjoy, like a last hurrah for the scene. Whether you were battling it out in World War II or in space or indulging in one of the many fan mods like Fall from Heaven or Rise and Fall of Civilization or Dune Wars, the last great Dune game so far, there was hundreds if not thousands of hours of quality turn-based content for you to indulge in. Number 7. Lord of Destruction for Diablo 2 Introducing a fifth act to the game and new character classes to enjoy, Lord of Destruction polished an already gleaming Diablo 2 into the greatest classic action RPG the world would ever see. Whether it was beneficial rebalances, new items and weapons, the introduction of runes and gem bonuses, or just giving the ability for hirelings to gain their own experience and follow the player through every act. The game was largely well received and upped the base game's resolution to a whopping 800 by 600. The combination of mechanical and technical improvements with new story elements and classes were exactly the sort of thing fans wanted from the series. Number 6. The Frozen Throne for Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos There's a reason Blizzard have multiple entries on this list. Turns out they were the masters of crafting a good expansion. The Frozen Throne is a direct sequel to the Reign of Chaos campaign from the third Warcraft game, introducing two new protagonists and continuing the quest of the doomed Prince Arthas. And an entirely separate Horde campaign just in case orc lovers felt left out by all this alliance focus. Sea units returned from Warcraft 2, buildings and heroes were added, and two more races were included in case people felt they weren't getting their money's worth. 
It was the beginning of the end for the blizzard we once knew, with the campaign shifting focus away from the RTS heavy elements of their early titles in the series, and introducing a much more narrative point to point navigation, often of a single or fixed number of units. Of course, playing it in 2021, there's no separating it from World of Warcraft, or the botched remaster that Activision Blizzard foisted upon it. But at one point in history back in 2003, it was a very exciting game to play, and future possibilities from the company seemed endless. Number 5. Shivering Isles for Oblivion one of the hallmarks of a good expansion is when it takes the criticism levied at the original game and answers it. Shivering Isles from Bethesda does exactly that. Oblivion sold well, but one of the biggest problems people had with it coming from Morrowind was that it was all very bright and generic fantasy land. Gone was the mystique and wonder of the previous title, with the Imperial capital and surrounding countryside looking like they could have come from any bad Tolkien clone written in the 70s or 80s. The Shivering Isles is a gateway world, ruled by the Daedric Prince of Madness Sheogorath. His realm is divided into mania and dementia, both of which look very distinctive indeed. An excellent middle finger by Bethesda's design team. You're chosen as his champion to prevent the Prince of Order from destroying the realm. But first, you have to defeat the dreaded gatekeeper in order to gain access. Unlike other expansions which alter the gameplay significantly, this plays more or less like the original game. But the memorable scenery and wild plotting really make it stand out, and stand the test of time. Number 4. Mask of the Betrayer for Neverwinter Nights 2. For the second time in their history, Obsidian were tasked with developing a sequel to a Bioware game. This time it was Neverwinter Nights. Despite a much improved story and better graphics thanks to the move from the Aurora engine to the Electron engine, the game suffered from the same problems as the first title, bugs. Fortunately, this was still an era where large developers took on board criticism, and Obsidian released the Mask of the Betrayer expansion the following year. Continuing the original story and doing what every good expansion does, and setting it in a new area. While the gameplay was identical to the original title, a new spirit eating mechanic was added, in addition to over a hundred new feats and spells, and bug fixes. But like most Obsidian games, the stability and mechanics weren't the standout points. New developer George Ziet's original story drew heavily from philosophical tales told by fellow Obsidian employee Chris Avalon in games like Planescape Torment and Knights of the Old Republic 2. This expansion is considered by aficionados to be one of the greatest RPGs outright. No wonder Zietz was brought back to help write Fallout New Vegas. Number 3. Throne of Baal for Baldur's Gate 2. Once described by PC Gamer as the most expansive expansion ever, Throne of Baal is a game within a game. When you cross that line between 20 to 30 hours of story, questions as to whether it's an expansion or a sequel start to crop up. Baal, for the longest time, was more or less Baldur's Gate 3. It wrapped up the story of the orphaned Ward of Gorion and his companions, with one final quest to defeat the legendary Baal spawn of the God of Murder. As far as epic conclusions to fantasy sagas go, this one is right up there. The writing is stellar, the settings are well crafted, and the Infinity Engine it runs on is tweaked even further. But the story isn't the only thing that this expansion changes. Adding a new dungeon, some new items and monsters, a new subclass, and a surprising new NPC. We'll never know how big Throne of Baal could have become, or whether it could have been extended and released as the third game outright, but as it stands, this award winning extension of the original is a satisfying capstone to the series. Number 2. Enemies of the Empire for Star Wars TIE Fighter This expansion didn't come in its own individual box, but was instead part of a collector's CD-ROM edition of TIE Fighter. For my money, the greatest DOS game ever released, and I've played a few. As well as including both the original campaign and the Defender of the Empire expansion, enemies more than doubled the resolution, added some of the best voice acting in gaming, and included improved cinematic cutscenes, as well as a slew of bug fixes and general enhancements. 
The actual campaign isn't quite as good as the base game, with you tracking down a devious traitor instigating a coup against the Galactic Empire, a plot that had already sort of been done to a lesser scale in the original missions. Quibbles aside, this will have you gunning your way right up to Endor, with your flight officer quietly hopeful about the future once the rest of the forces have crushed the rebels in one decisive conflict. It's a bittersweet moment after all the fighting you've done to get there, knowing that Return of the Jedi is just around the corner. All these enhancements probably made it the best space combat simulator for the last 25 years. Until the release of TFTC. You should check that out, though I might be a bit biased there. Number 1. Brood War for StarCraft Quite often on this channel, I'll talk about games that changed the landscape, that signified a seismic shift in the way a genre or part of gaming was perceived. But to do that while talking about an expansion pack to a game almost never happens. While taken for granted these days, televised competitive multiplayer wasn't anywhere near as big in the winter of 98. Brood War changed that becoming a mainstay of the world's cyber games and spawning the Korean StarCraft League. It was also a direct continuation of the game's original story, with a significantly more difficult campaign that rivalled the original in size and scope. New units and augmented AI across less linear point-to-point -point levels were combined with a more cinematic presentation that would follow Blizzard into their future. Upon release, it was hailed as the standard by which all games in its genre would be measured, featuring fascinating characters, a climactic story that enthralled and amazed, and it became critically acclaimed as not just the best expansion pack ever released, but possibly the greatest game in history to date. To this day, over 20 years out from release, it's still the best expansion pack, but sadly that's more because the idea of an expansion has mostly gone the way of the dinosaur. What a shame. And if you like these top 10 lists, I have a playlist over there of plenty of other top 10 lists you can check out. Also feel free to give the channel a look, there's all kinds of old retro stuff to the tune of hundreds of videos. Until next time.